I Drive SoCal is brought to you by the best automotive retailers from across Southern California. We consider our dealer partners friends and highly recommend them. When it's time for you to buy, just go to idrivesocal.com and click on dealers to get connected. Or email me and I'll personally introduce you. Tom at idrivesocal.com. That's Tom, T-O-M, at I, the letter I, drive like drive a car, SoCal like SouthernCalifornia.com. Tom at idrivesocal.com. Now, on with the podcast. We'll do five. Okay. They're all my top five, depending on what mood you're in. So, I mean, these are radically different top five. There's not a theme to them at all. That was five. That, no, mm-mm, that was four. Wasn't it? What talking about that was five. Did I really just go... T- really? Oops. You you had five. Wow. Let, go, go ahead. If you got another one, go ahead. Welcome to iDrive SoCal, the podcast all about mobility from the automotive capital of the United States, Southern California. Tom Smith here, and joining me is not the good professor, Mr. Clinton Kwan. Joining me is actually Bernadette Santacola. Hello, Bernie Sports. Hello, waiting for my nickname. What will it be? I don't know. Bernie well, Sports, really, I think, yeah, for now. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to speak. And the reason why we say Bernie Sports is because that's what your uh, Instagram is, right? Yep, that's at, all the social media. At Bernie Sports. Uh, just at Bernie Sports. I always want to throw a .com at the end of that, but it's just at Bernie Sports. But all the background noise is uh, due to our being at the Orange County International Auto Show. And uh, we've actually been here, uh, Bernadette and I and Clinton, we, we came on Thursday. Um, I think they came a couple other days as well. I'd stopped in another day, but but now this is Sunday. This is the last day. Um, and the show has been a great success. It's been a lot of fun. Um the Orange County International Auto Show is big on the test drives. Now, uh, I've been busy manning the fort and, and doing the things that I need to do. Clinton's done a lot of test driving. Um, I'm not sure if Bernadette's test driven or not, but what we're going to talk about, we've already talked about with Clinton, um, because I know what you have done has gotten all over the show, mm-hmm. just like Clinton has. Found a certain corner. So the professor and I did a top five, and... Um, and his top five, I'll share with you after you share with me your top five. But uh, Bernadette and Clinton are two very different people, very different drivers. All love cars, but it's a good that that's a slice of like automotive enthusiasts, right? There's there's something out there for everybody, and there's something that everybody leans towards. There's some things that everybody can universally love, and there's other things that people love more than than other things but so bernadette's list we haven't really i I know it's going to be a little bit on the higher end the exotic (laughs) type thing um but with that being said bernie sports bernadette santa cola's uh top five here at the orange county international auto show now before we dive into it we have to know one do you have any criteria around your top five no, this is just draw, straight draw, straight draw. Like what attracted me the most. I, Any, so anything. So, so it could be anything. No, it, it could, could be. It could be in production. Too. It could be a, a a concept car. It could be. It could be right. in dealerships now. It could be coming right. to dealerships soon. It could be coming to dealerships perhaps maybe never because it's a concept car. Right. right. Okay. Um, now then, the other thing is, how are we going to do it? Are we going to go five to one? Or are we going to say it doesn't matter? They're just all my top five. They're all my top five. They're, they're all your they're, top they're five. Depending on what mood you're in, like they're depending on what mood you're in. So I mean, okay. these so, are two, these are radically different top five. They're okay. not. There's not a theme to them at all. So okay, so it's top five, but in in no particular in no order. No particular order. Okay, with that in mind, uh, Bernadette Santa Cola's top five from the 2018 Orange County International Auto Show. Take wanna, it away, Bernadette. Want to guess number one? Uh, the, probably the most expensive car in, <laughs> in the place. Well, I did find that little corner of the auto show, which is probably my favorite thing about the OC Auto Show, is that they have these luxury brands. And they're independent dealers, but they have them here. They have Ferrari, Porsche, Audi, um, BMW. But they also have things like Aston Martin. And for number one of the top five, Lamborghini. They had the Urus. This is a new SUV, 
Lambo. It's a big yep. deal for Lamborghini. World's, world's fastest production SUV. Yes. And it is a good looking car, Tom. It is a really At good looking course, car. Of course, it's a Lamborghini. Come on. But you know what? Everyone's going this SUV. Uh, everyone's going big. Bentley, Land Rover, Porsche. I mean, and they're doing well with it. So I don't know where everyone's parking in Southern California, but <laughs> these bigger cars are, are taking over, which is why number two is um, the Range Rover. Well, Oh, you want to go back more up to Lambo? Well, I, I mean, uh, first off, this is... I was going to put a theme together with these, but yeah, the, okay, the but, Lamborghini but, 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 was but, impressive. Okay, but what was what was it? Because this is the first year that it's out, mm -hmm. right? It's in dealerships, but it, right. but but it's 2018 is the first year. Right, and they say the platform is the Q7's platform, Audi. I thought it looked more Porsche to me. So um, I, it is a good-looking car. It is the first year it's out. There will be limited production of them, but yes... It's called. I don't really love the name. Of yeah, the car. It sounds like a I, I doctor's think, visit. I, <laughs> um, it refers to something though. I think the Urus, Urus, right? Yes. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I believe it's the. It's. Uh, it. Uh, I want to say it's like a, a bull or something like that. It's some type um, of. Yeah. Which would make sense for Lamborghini, right? Ferrari is the the black horse. Lamborghini is the the bull of some sort itself. Right. But um, yeah, it is. It does mean bull, I believe. So so, and you mentioned size. So it's a it's a full size. Yes. It's a full size, and it's and it's four doors. It, but it's it's not a seven passenger, right? It's not no, three rows. No, mm, no. What it, do you know if it comes in more than one trim level? I do not. No, they okay. didn't let me get as close as I wanted. Security. <laughs> yeah, they didn't give close. you keys. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about price point? Price point's high. So the price point on the Lambo is in the high. I believe it is. It's it's over a hundred grand, oh, yeah. right? It's, it's yeah. One it's, is, we're is talking like close closer to two hundred. Yeah, yeah. To two. Okay. I believe it is two. So you have three of them, right? One in, in, in each color. That come, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Because I want to do the same car in three different colors. Okay. <laughs> not 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 quite at that tax bracket. No. no okay, no, yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so so that was number one. Right. So the Lamborghini Urus number one. Um, any particular reason why? It's just eye-catching and... I thought it was very cool to have um, Ferraris on their way to doing something similar. Uh, is Ferrari going to be doing an SUV? Yes, yes. Is this an SUV or crossover? This is... Well, they... Even if they called it a cross... It looks more like an You're SUV. You're not taking it off-road, though, right? No, no, okay. God, okay. no. I, I but it, it likes it, getting wet. It gives you the, the upright seating position, command of the road. It does. And it, yet you're still in a exotic... Super car, super Correct. SUV. Correct. And I heard, I mean, the thing is the handling, too. It's for the, the California drivers that want a performance car that can also look like it goes off-road. It kind of went after that Range Rover okay. market. And I think Bentley... Yeah, but Range Rover can go off-road. Range Rover actually can, yes. And so can this one. I mean, I, In a big way, Range Rover can yes, go off-road. that's true. That's what it's made for. But, um, you know, Bentley and everybody in Porsche also can as well. It's just, do you want to take it off-road? Yeah. I mean, with the even a little scratch on the paint, yeah. <laughs> it breaks your yeah. heart. So, yeah. um, But no, the car can perform, and, and honestly, knowing that you can is just maybe half, half of the fun. All right. I like it. I would take it on the beach. Maybe. I'm sure you're not alone. A lot of people yeah. like yeah. it. If I've seen pictures of it. I haven't, you know, I haven't gotten it. They haven't let me out of my my. We have to get area. you walking around. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, now we can go on to, to number two, although these are in no particular order. No right? particular order, right. Okay. But um, number two, the Range Rover Sport. The Range Rover yes, Sport. the Range Rover Sport uh, P-Head, so a hybrid Range Rover, which I thought this was not possible. The Range Rover Sport, say again? P-Head, a hybrid. P-Hev? Yeah, P plug-in hybrid. P-H? P-H-E-V, P-Hev. P-Hev, okay, that's how, they, that's how they say it with the accent, it's the P-Hev. I did not. <laughs> I, yes. I haven't been haven't been in the UK lately. No, it's just on the on all the blogs, Tom. The Range Rover Sport P-Hev, yes. P it's a plug-in hybrid, yes. Okay, okay, the plug-in hybrid Range Rover Sport. So now I get where you're going with that. You didn't know that it was possible for such a Two fuel points. inefficient Steel fuel feet. inefficiently inefficiently known as very bad gas mileage. <laughs> and yes. Beautiful car. One of the most beautiful SUVs on the road. Always has been for sure. Uh, but it's a sport. It's a plug-in hybrid. Yes. Is that in dealerships now? It is. It is. It is. Wow. And it is. Um, it's impressive. It. I walked past it, Tom, and I saw the the front of it, and I'm like, what is hanging out the front of that car? And it was a plug. And I'm like, they made it. I can't. I can't believe it because I had an older Range Rover Sport and was at the gas station every five minutes. Right. But it was so heavy. They're still made of steel. It's yeah. still 2.5 tons 
but it's got a you know 14 to 18 mile electric range it's it's impressive what kind of gas mileage is it getting with it do you know uh, 15 20 no, I don't know. <laughs> that so was a guess. You were making that up. I All was right. making that up. Don't, no. don't but, um, quote that. It, it, but the it, fact that they're going that direction is great. I bet you they go all electric in the not so distant future. The, I could see and that. And it'll probably, it'll probably be great, but. Well, I think I they know. battle more with the diesel at, versus the electric. The, for as far as fuel efficiency, um, cars like Range Rover that are that heavy and that sustainable end up being more efficient with a diesel model. So same thing with the BMWs. That's why they always end up releasing a hybrid as well as a diesel right behind it, because that could save more in fuel consumption than, than actually plug-in hybrids, even though that's the way of the future. Okay. A fully electric Range Rover would be um, something to see. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it'll... Well, no, I, I'll, I'll guess it. I'll guess right now, because I've, I've said on the podcast numerous times that my opinion may change, right? I'll share my opinion, but it may change by the time that I end the recording on this or by the time certainly I post the podcast. But uh, I will bet that we do see all electric Range Rovers, um, certainly once battery technology gets there. And I think we're going to see electric everything when battery technology gets right. there. And it's getting there. It's getting better every, every uh, I don't know, every day is right word but it's constantly getting better for sure and range rover did say too because of the competition that that every car from 2020 on will have some form of electric um, element to it so they are they are incorporating it into the brand and they are um, incorporating still having their supercharged cars but um but with electric motors so uh what is it that you were particularly drawn to about i mean i I, well, the, I, I know I can fill in the blank, but but tell me anything that I don't this know. This was this was for the that the old school person in me that it doesn't change the look of it. All yeah. the electric cars look so different and futuristic, and the headlights to the grill to this right. car still look like a Range Rover. It still looked like a Range Rover Sport, and I love that. Like okay. I don't need it to look that futuristic. I'm I'm still a petrol head. Um, nah, you know what though? But I, I thought it was a be- they're beautiful cars, and it was a nice looking. They're going design. and it, it, you know, Clint and I have done a lot of reviews lately, and. And, and the spaceshipy look is going by the wayside. That's not something that 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 is happening so much anymore. So it's great that nobody else is doing it as well. Um, so the uh, your number one was again the Lambo Urus. Yes. No, that would be more the like Lambo. five. We're going five, four, three, two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, you said they're in no I particular know, order. That you was said the, your number okay, one. Okay. Well, that was your no, that was the first one we talked first about. First one we talked about Lambo okay. Urus. Range Rover Sport Hybrid. Mm-hmm. Uh, number three. Number three. I'm going to go with um, a concept car, but based off their one of their most selling uh, number one SUVs, still in the SUV market, is the Nissan Dog Car. The Nissan Dog Car. I said Nissan Dog. Yeah, Dog is how I think they, they, yeah. they pronounce it. D O G U. Yes. It's the Rogue, but it's specifically for dogs. It's, for, it's exactly. It's made completely for dogs. I mean, Tom, this thing is tailored to like having a treat dispenser. The, the key fob actually will dispense a treat for your dog. Okay? Oh, that's cute. It is very cute. It's got a 10-gallon a, a, um, tank um, for, for water, so you can you know wash your dog off. It's got a blow dryer that I actually want in my personal house. My, my dog loves getting in the car and going places with me, but he absolutely hates baths. So <laughs> the whole... yeah, that, Rinse that, him off before he gets yeah, in thing? Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. He wouldn't want to get in the car anymore. It would ruin it for him. But... Anyway, it's impressive. It has it has monitors in the back so that the dog can see you while you're driving. It has um, it has everything you could possibly think of in this car for a dog. But it is a concept car based upon their Rogue, and the, the Rogue is a great car, and that's the one they're showcasing here. So, but the interesting thing is, is this is their second concept mm-hmm. with this same concept. So, what that tells you is, I think what that tells you is there's enough interest in this for them to be a second concept. Now, will there ever be a, a, a rogue that comes out with this exact? Probably not. No. But I'll bet we start to see some of the, the parts. Yeah, some of the features, some of the options. I, yeah, I did talk to someone over there and they said that you can um, get certain elements of the car. There are yeah. there are accessories available. So if you wanted to customize your Rogue and have it somewhat similar. Very not, dog friendly. Very dog friendly, yes. Not Maybe not necessarily extreme. a concept dog, but. Not a dog, but there's no <laughs> ramp and there's no, you know, pet treats, but you can get um, close enough to it. And yeah. I think that was the idea behind it. I, it was, it's very cute. I mean, my dog loves the front seat, so I know he would be, I'm not getting back there. Yeah. I don't need a ramp, but yeah. um, 
But, you know, there's a lot of celebrities and, you know, I, hey, so Southern California, we have a lot of people that love their animals. Absolutely. And this kind of thing might. Hey, hey, not just Southern California. There's people that love their animals everywhere. That's but, true. But, but especially, we, we do have a lot of dog lovers more. here. We yeah. do. <laughs> we, um, <laughs> you mentioned your dog loves the front seat. My dog is actually, ever since my son was born, this is our, our dog was really our first, our first child, Mr. Jake. Always. Um, ever since, ever since our son was born, Mr. Jake, uh, enjoys not only the front seat, but he likes sitting on the center council. <laughs> oh, you're one of those guys. <laughs> I, mean, I, I feel bad because he's gotten knocked down a little, a little bit. Yeah. He's, you know, he, he's our first son, but I, you know, we have a human son now. But so at any rate, okay, that's, so, that's a steady driver, Tom. That's a nice, smooth driver. I to keep I him take right it easy. there. I take it easy. My car is always in eco mode. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so we had the Lambo Urus. We had the Range Rover Sport. Sport hybrid. Mm -hmm. We have the Nissan Doge. And uh, what's number four? Number four is the Fiat 124. The Fiat 124. Spider. It's the little convertible by Fiat. Okay. That is literally the most fun to drive, the most fun convertible you could probably get, or an Italian car you could probably get at that price point. It is adorable. So this is a production car? No, this yeah, it's in production. It's at the dealerships now. It's at dealerships now. Okay. It's been at dealerships, yeah, and they're showcasing it here and it, I just I I absolutely adore it. You know what I'm just realizing we didn't we didn't get uh years out. So so the the first was the Lambo Urus. That was a twenty eighteen. Twenty nineteen. Or twenty nineteen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would I believe make sense. so, yeah. The um Doug is um No, a, number two. Oh, your two was the eighteen. Range Rover Sport P, um hybrid? hybrid. 2018, so that's that's in dealerships now. Yes, I believe it is. Okay, the Dog is concept, so there's not really a year on that. The um, uh, four is what again? Fiat 124. Fiat 124, and, and that's that a 2019. A, that's that's 17, 2017. But they've re revamped, they've re facelift, and it looks. They don't have a 17 on the sh on the no, floor here. No, they have an 18. So the 18 is here. The 18, yes. Okay, and it's it's at dealerships now. Yes. You sure it's not a 19? It, this might be a 19 here, but it looks exactly, the car came, it's the same thing from okay. the 18 to 19. So is this a... They have an it, eight-bar version. It's a, con it's a convertible? Yes. A two-seater convertible. Soft top? Yes. Hard top options? No. Okay. Everybody's going away from that hard top option. Most de most um, manufacturers are, are going all the soft top. It's the new way. Um, Wait. The, uh, by the way. You need to provide pictures for all of these to pictures. accompany the it. podcast. You already have pictures of I all have these? Pictures. I'm ready with good, pictures. Good, good. Okay. They're not the best, but I'll, I'll yeah. <laughs> Tom loves my pictures. Sorry. Yeah, guys. Bernadette's camera work. Yeah. If anybody out there like wants to give <laughs> Bernadette some uh, pointers on, <laughs> on some, some photography lessons. I take good selfies with your son. <laughs> we are going to post that, yeah, though, too. He's cute. Um, okay, so the. Uh, um, what was your Fiat? The Fiat. The Fiat. One, two, three. Okay, so the one, best two, four. Part, one, two, four. Okay. Okay. That is, the it's best a two part, seater, right? Two There's seater, no back yes, seat. Yes. Okay. No, it's a two seater. It's it's a little it's a little Italian car with attitude. Its price point is the best. It starts at twenty two. Wow. I mean, you can get an A bar for twenty six, and it's it's adorable. It's it's a fun. Car are those to drive. the two? It's just the yeah. one, two, four, or the A bar? Those right. are the two trim those levels. The, I mean, that's the high end trim level and the, the base model. Yeah, you can okay. customize the seats in certain ones, and you can get that two tone leather. Um, in the A-bars and some racing stripes as well. Okay. But um, it, the car was just a blast to drive. They make it in manual still. A lot of people... Did you that, test drive it here? Um, not here. Not I here. Didn't, okay. I didn't but test you've driven here. one. But I've driven one, yes. Okay. Um, and I think it's just for price point and convertibles and, you know, driving on stuck in traffic, that car would be a blast. Okay. Sounds like a good car for a single person or a weekender or a for a couples car, right. or, yeah, that kind of thing. Because even the manual is, is a fun car for people that are, you know, the guys that want to a Porsche, but don't want to spend the money on that to just yeah. Zip hey, the sometimes canyons. that you know that's one of the it's things. Still that, made by Italian, yeah. One of the things I love about uh, about doing the iDrive SoCal uh, uh, podcast program with our dealer partners is that I like to drive stick shift from time to time, and when I do, I just go test drive something and uh, you know ask for it in a stick, which there's not a lot of these days. No, no. You, you really gotta. There's just not a lot. Um, which is cool. I mean, because technology is out there where you you don't. But but I like it. I like that. I like popping a clutch and not popping a clutch and burning <laughs> the tires kind of thing. But I like I like driving a stick anyway. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people are going away from that. Like so many manufacturers, including um, 
that your luxury ones like BMW are, are not making manuals in a lot of their cars and people people miss that. Yeah. You know, PDK systems, um, dual clutch gearboxes are taking over, but my next um, one on the list will never go away from a manual. Okay. Okay, you, can you cue the Bond music? Cue the Bond music? <laughs> yeah. Aston, Aston Martin, Martin something. TV11. Yes, okay. the TV11. I am such a sucker for these cars. The TV11, Aston and I, Martin. You know, okay. the, I could have picked any one of those cars over there, but talking to um, someone from Aston Martin, North America, which is based here in Irvine, and that, that was a surprise for me. It's so nice to hear that they still have that purest um, element. They will always have manuals. They will always have um, things you can customize in the car all the way down to from the stitching to the leather. Of course, you pay for all these things. Yeah. But um, but the DB11 is, is a very, very sexy car. And um, at, out of all the manufacturers here showcasing that British racing green, they didn't have it in that color, shockingly. Really? Yeah. Huh. They, they said they already, I mean, they, they know it's British. But Lambo, it, the design is changing a little bit. Um, they're, they're a little bit lighter. They're not doing anything electric. Are you, are you talking about Aston Martin? No, I'm you sorry, just I mentioned Lamborghini. I'm sorry, I yeah. went back. Yes, okay. no, I'm confused. They're all in the same corner. I'm overwhelmed. No, um, the Aston Martin. It's okay. not electric. This is a V12 or a V8 option. Okay. Five engine, three horsepower, beautiful sound to it. And cus the customization can get crazy. It can get crazy. I mean, they start at, a, the V8 starts at 198, and the V12 is around um, 216 starting base. V12. V12. Yeah. Yes. Let's just throw a hundred grand on top of the car with a V. Put put, well, put a V12 in. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, you know what that sounds like. I know. I know. Um, I know. It's and just... that's why I think that the electric um, element of Aston Martin will probably wait. We'll wait a couple of years for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't. It, it'll be interesting to see. You know, I was talking with somebody the other day. I think I, it might have been the professor, and I think we were talking about uh, automotive. Uh, oh, classic car shows. Like, when are, when are the hybrids and electrics that are here now, like, when are they actually going to be classics? And, and, and the idea, and I think he said, like, maybe 20, 30 years. But that'll, but so then the next question is, when those, in 20 or 30 years, when those are our classics, what are we buying? Spaces. New, right? Yeah. We're buying flying cars Me, at that point George in time? Jetson. Yeah, <laughs> we're, buying, we're buying flying cars, or I mean, but but I mean, and even as electric is inevitable, um, I I think I hope that combustion engines are still going to be around. I you think know, they need each other. We were we were talking. You know, I think you mentioned uh, uh, how how much you love how something sounds. Um, Professor and I were talking about how much we loved uh, the sound of something. I think he, he oh he was talking about the. Uh, uh, the F-Type Jag R. Mm -hmm. uh, no. The I-Pace. No, 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 no. The I-Pace is electric. Right. We're, that has no sound. No, but we were, we were talking about how much we loved how something sounded. Yeah, the, F, the, um, the, the new uh, uh, Whatever it was. But, F oh. F-Type. The Jaguar F-Type R. F-Type yeah. yes, R, yeah. yes. That thing is, <laughs> she's shouty. Yeah, yeah. She's and aggressively there's, loud. So there's something about, there's something about how the combustion, combustion engine sounds that I, I just I, I hope it sticks around I don't you know obviously you want well right. yeah I agree with you and, and everybody has to go this way and even I mean even Aston Martin did admit that they are working on um, another division of their company will be um, will be electric and they are working on on an electric car they also are working on an SUV as well to compete with everybody else in the yeah. market but um, what I did love about it is that what they're doing differently now is because they kind of went through a little bit of a you know slow period having from 2008 nine mm -hmm. they said all the cars look the same so yeah now Aston Martin is not putting any names on the back of any of their cars no badging because they they want every car that they make from now on out to look so different that you can tell what it is that's interesting. And I love that. that. That's kind of cool. It's very cool. It's like they were, they were, you know, their customers, I think their fans were really upset to, you know, they all look the same. And some of those that look the same had a price difference of $100,000 and you're paying that and it looks the same as the one next to it. Yeah. You know, so it, it, I think that's a very cool thing that they're doing. And the look of um, the cars is very different. And we'll see what Bond drives next. Of course, right? they're commissioned for the next Bond movie. Yeah, and but, I think um, that'll be Daniel Daniel Craig's last, supposedly, oh, yeah, right? It's still Daniel Craig. Yeah. I, you know what? Connery was my favorite for a long time until, until Daniel, Daniel Craig. Craig. Yeah, me and too. And I was like, all right, this guy's cool. This guy rocks it. As long as Tom Ford and Aston Martin are involved, I'm in. So. All right. All right. I know, I know. It's the other element of James Bond. 
Bernadette Santacola, anything else to add about yeah, the uh, 2018? That was five. That, no, mm -mm, that was four. Wasn't what are you it? Talking about that was five. Did I cut out BMW? That was like my number one. Did I really just go? T really? Oops. You you had five. Wow. Well, go go ahead. If you got another one, go well, ahead. Oh shoot! <laughs> I know. I was worried about having five. No. Well, I I guess I got in that little corner again. So if you come to the Orange County Auto Show, you notice there's a little corner and it sucks you in and it starts with Ferrari and um, the one that drew me the most though was the BMW. The BMW the what? M5. The M5? The M5 is the oh, wolf Oh, but wait a minute. Clothing. Bernadette just did a, a, a M5, yes, uh, just did a drive on a, on, a, on a formula course with an M5. So, so We bonded. Yeah, so there you have that. But go ahead, talk okay, about the M5. Okay, I will. Well, BMW's new cars and the new model lineup is, is going to be so in, um, intense the next couple of years. So they have over like 10 models coming out. But the M5 looks the exact same. And I know that's what everybody says. It looks just like a regular 5, but that's the point of it. It's the wolf in uh, sheep's clothing. That car is the most impressive 6 I don't think it's in sheep's clothing. It I is. think it, it looks, looks like, like a four-door race car. It looks like a regular 5 Series. It's, it's not. There's a little uh, bit of aesthetic differences, but if you're know. at a stoplight... I vote, personally, car? I've always wanted one. So, oh. I mean, I when I... I don't I see one, I know it yes. exactly, but I, I, I guess I can see where you're saying that. I guess I can see your point that it's not too much of a stretch. It is. Um, and, and by the way, that's not my son yeah, that's no. screaming. <laughs> and I'm not holding him. But but <laughs> <laughs> that is not, I'm not holding any children at this moment, I just like to point out. But no, the M5 is my favorite because it's it's just, of course, because I bonded with it on the track at yeah. the Circuit of Americas. But it's, um, you know, BMW's going away from that dual clutch gearbox, which we were just talking about, going towards automatic. Um, it's going to be four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive car. And you don't think race car and all-wheel drive, but it has the ability to switch to two-wheel drive, and um, which you don't want to, well, I didn't want to do. That was scary for me. I, that was a lot of handling for me, and I'm not that good I of a love, driver. I love rear-wheel drive. It, you know what? I just love rear-wheel drive. I'm always going to love rear-wheel drive. But I want to be able to step on it, but you chirp you and do. or smoke the back tires. I want to be able to slide the rear end out whenever I feel like. You could I still just do that. love it. You could still do that. Not with all-wheel drive. Yes, you can, because none of them are really all-wheel drive. I mean, the idea of it is more I so. I know, I know. It, and you could deactivate all of these things. It's just one button. I'll show you what to push when your child is not in your car. <laughs> but, I mean, um, I remember you back in the day, Tom. You used to drive a little bit more aggressively. You know where that button is to deactivate yeah, yeah, systems. Yeah. But, no, the car can handle. And, honestly, like, a lot of these systems will take over if you if you do spin the tires out and you can't handle the control of it. I mean, these yeah. cars are impressive and 600 horsepower is a lot. But it's 690? Not. That's what 600. I 600. No, 600. 600? 600, 600 horsepower, 590, yeah. What's the price point for the M5? It starts around 89. And what uh, what does it go up to? How many, are, are there multiple trim levels for the M5 or is it just M5 and no, then the, some options? there's multiple options. Like you can get rear entertainment options to it. You can get carbon, um, ceramic. Um, yeah. <laughs> rear entertainment. Well, if you <laughs> While like you're your, experiencing the G's and, yeah, <laughs> and uh, trying to keep your lunch you down. You have TVs in the back. Yes, two of them. Personally, <laughs> personally you'd be watching one thing on one and all something right. else on the other. Yes. All right, all right, all right. So, so, so... Uh, so it starts where? 85? 85. And then goes up to? To whatever you want to make it. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the color choices, the customization you could do to these cars is, is a lot. So, I mean, I haven't seen one over 110 or anything like that. Yeah. But, I mean, but they are in dealers now. Um, I would suggest ordering one. Um, You're talking the 2018 or 2019? 2018. 2019s are in the dealers, too. 20. Okay. So you're talking 2019? 2019. 2019. Okay. Always think forward. I'm right thinking now. forward. I'm thinking Thank forward. You. Okay. Confusing me with these numbers here. All right. Now, are you done with your top five that actually wound top up being six? <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Okay. All right. Bernadette Santacola, thank you, as always, for joining. Um, Orange County International Auto Show 2018. Uh, that pretty much puts a wrap on this one, a big bow on it. Um, thank you to the show for having us out. We had a lot of fun. It was a long weekend. Time to rest up and uh, get ready for the rest of auto show season. Um, Bernadette, thank you again. Thanks. For I Drive SoCal, I am Tom Smith. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. This episode was engineered and edited by Bobby Flores. Howdy. Still here, huh? That's cool, but this one's pretty much done. But we have tons of additional content at our website.
idrivesocal.com. If you're not listening from there already, you should definitely check it out. From there, you can subscribe to our newsletter, the podcast, or leave a note. And I'd love to hear from you too. Here's my email, tom at idrivesocal.com. That's tom, T-O-M, at idrive, the letter I, drive like drive a car, SoCal like Southern California, dot com. Tom at idrivesocal.com. Thanks again for listening and please reach out with whatever's on your mind.